Hello, hello. How's everybody doing? So I woke up this morning and I was, I literally, the thought that I had in my mind was just how happy and amazing that I felt like my life was. Like I just, I, I felt extremely happy. And my thought process when all of this was going on was just how interesting it is when you think about paralleling that to somebody else's life. I woke up obviously and read about Anthony Bourdain. We had Kate Spade who lost herself to suicide this week. Um, and I was trying to figure out like, how could it be that one person is so happy and another person is struggling so much internally? Um, what creates that gap in people's lives? When I think about why I'm so happy, I have a lot of things that I could be upset about. I have the press trying to assassinate my character every single day, going after my family, going after my friends. And yet at the end of every single day, I feel this tremendous sense of relief. And when I think about why some people don't experience that, it's probably because there's a gap between, a very significant gap between their private persona and their public persona. They aren't living their truth. They're not able to live their truths out loud. Obviously, Kate Spade was struggling internally. Obviously, Anthony Bourdain was struggling internally. And they never represented that to the public. They always showed their best selves to the public um, and made it seem like their lives were perfect. Whereas I think in many ways, I do the exact opposite. If anything, I'm, I'm constantly growing and showing people all of the ugly spots of my life and there, there's such freedom and imperfection. There's such freedom and the ability to talk. Most people would say you can't jump on Periscope and talk about suicide. And that's exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm talking about suicide because it feels like an act of freedom. Like I can talk about the fact that somebody else is struggling and I'm not. And that, that seems insensitive to some people, but I just want to be completely authentic so that we can actually have an authentic discussion about some of the things that are going on in this world. We've built up a society, when you think about all of these revolutions that are taking place in the world right now, what happened in America is that we built up a society that was so politically correct that people were being fake. They, we've been going out and we've been being fake. We've been pretending that everything offends us. We've been pretending that we're these perfect beings um, who are overly sensitive about everything and it's not how we're living our lives behind closed doors. I, I feel like so much of the movement that's happening in America is a desire to return to authenticity, to stop being fake and to start talking about some of, you know, the issues that go on behind closed doors, just being able to tell a joke, you know, the jokes that we tell to one another behind closed doors. You can't even do that publicly because you'll be called insensitive. You're not sensitive enough to the vegan community. You're not sensitive enough to the plight of blacks when you wear your hair in braids. It's all so inauthentic that on the inside people are struggling. And I don't know, I feel like that has a lot to do with the fact that the suicide, suicide rates have increased so dramatically um, over the last few years. I know Charlie has lost some friends to suicide. Do you have any thoughts on it? Yeah. Um, driving here. Um, but yeah, I lost a really good friend that I grew up with that uh, played on my high school football team. I uh, won't say his name just for the privacy of the family, but it was really sudden. It was really tragic. The whole community really uh, struggled with it. Um, and it was just so, so shocking. And for those for those of that knew him, we knew that he he lost his father and that he was going through a lot of tough times. But I've lost a other couple like tangential friends, I guess you could say, through suicide in our community recently as well. And if you've looked since 1999, the CDC has said that suicide rates have increased by almost 25 percent. And what's so amazing about suicide, amazing is the wrong word, but what's so interesting about the suicide rates is that it's a uniquely Western problem. It's in actually impoverished countries. They have very, very low suicide it's rates. Fascinating. And so it's almost, suicide is a byproduct of luxury. It's a byproduct of liberty. Um, in countries that are third world countries, suicide is an unknown concept, which is very counterintuitive. You would think that people would be committing suicide more when they have right. a lot less. In fact, suicide is almost relegated mostly to white suburban areas, but black community has the lowest suicide rate. That's fascinating. Um, which is, there's a lot of interesting studies done about that when you actually compartmentalize it. Um, but why people go to suicide, every reason is different. Every, every situation is completely outside itself. For the celebrities in particular, Candace hit the nail on its head. There's this, there's this, um, there's this chasm between the public persona and the private person. 
and they feel as if they have to be someone different when they're presented publicly. And that, and that, that really creates demons within you. Right. And, and it's funny that you say that, when, like what he just said about the culture of being celebrities and that the fact that this takes place more in suburban areas, places where there are more, more of a lap of luxury, is that you find that, like the the wealthier people get, the more inauthentic they get. Like, do you really think that these celebrities, like, in their private lives, the things that matter the most to them are, like, whether or not, like, PETA, you know, is, is furs, and whether or not Kim Kardashian is wearing fur on the red carpet? Do you really think that these are the causes that mean the most to them? Probably not. They feel like they have to act, that they have to act like they're a perfect being. There's almost a sense of guilt that comes with them for their for their wealth. Like they feel guilty about the fact that they've accomplished so much in their lives. They are constantly putting on a fake pers- persona. And you see what happens when a celebrity defects from that fake persona. When a celebrity is real, they're often attacked. When they say something that is authentic, they're almost attacked. Um, so I think that they struggle internally um, all the time because they're not able to just be themselves. I see that even now. I'm not even a celebrity. And the more that my following has grown, people expect me to be perfect. I'm not allowed to say things that I feel and they want me to delete the tweet and and change my perspective. You can't say that maybe Chelsea Handler was crazy because she didn't have kids, but I said it. I didn't delete the tweet because I'm not going to be inauthentic. If I'm if I'm grappling with questions that are in, that are going on in my head, if I have different ideas that I'm working through, I'm going to be that person publicly. The same things that I talk about privately, I'm going to talk about publicly. And whether that makes you uncomfortable doesn't really matter to me because at the end of the day, I have to live so that Candace Owens feels that she is the same person that she is publicly as she is privately. I have to be even with myself. And we don't afford that. We don't allow people that are public figures or celebrities to experience that. That authenticity that we experience on a private level. Yeah, Candace is spot on. And so if you look at Kate Spade and you look at Anthony Bourdain, they quote unquote had it all. They were very wealthy. They had brands that people invested in. It is the quote unquote dream of what it's supposed to, you know, accomplishment. And then they, they, voluntarily exit themselves from existence. So it makes the thing, where does meaning come from? Does it come from the accumulation of wealth? Well, purpose comes from responsibility, really. And it comes from family, comes from friends, but it also comes from, as Candace talks about, being confident and comfortable with yourself. And so if your brand or if your life is built around something that you're truly not, not to say that Anthony and Kate didn't have that, but just use an example, then all of a sudden you're gonna have demons pop up within you that you never thought possible or imaginable and, and Candace has lost friends to the suicide I've lost friends to suicide it's a horribly tragic thing if anyone's watching this and is struggling with mental health right now there's incredible resources out there I in fact I know plenty of people that were on the brink of suicide and have successfully turned that around and I've used that as a victor story and uh, that is not the option for you but more than anything else the, the, the best reason not to ever ever even think about committing suicide or getting near it is that it creates an unimaginable amount of guilt and pain for the people around you of what they think they could have done better, of what they could have um, corrected. And I know myself, I went through that with my close friend that committed suicide. Um, and it, 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 it really is not a, it's not a benevolent thing to do to anyone around you. Um, and even the pain you might be feeling in that moment, that it's gonna create even more pain for a lot more people. And that's something that, uh, it's, it wouldn't be good. I was sort of grappling also this morning with the idea of why the culture of victimhood is so attractive, why it's so attractive to say that you're a victim because you're a fem, you know, you're, you're a woman or because you're black or because you're Spanish. People are dying to be victims. And the correct answer about the, the culture of victimhood and why it's so attractive is it because it makes life easier. Life is, is already hard. It's, 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 life a, is it's, suffering. life is suffering. That's exactly right. Life is incredibly difficult and we're constantly trying to figure out who we are and the scope of what society is telling us that we have to be. And the easiest thing is, is if someone hands you a pass and says, no matter what you don't accomplish, it's not your fault. It's because you got, you know, the wrong end of the stick in life. It's because you're black. It's because you're a woman. And that's why people are so attracted to the culture of victim because it gives them a pass in life. They don't have to work hard. Um, they don't have to accept their own faults and the things that they could have done differently. And I think that there, there is a correlation between the, the, the culture of victimhood and why people commit suicide. And, and it's just that life is hard. 
life is suffering and we have to acknowledge that life is hard without handing out passes. We have to acknowledge that, you know, even the people at the top are, are struggling and they're going through certain things. And um, until we're able to have that authentic conversation, until we stop trying to tell people that they have to be perfect, that they're not allowed to make errors, that they're not allowed to say sorry and be forgiven, then we're forcing them into these boxes um, where suicide might be an option for them. And somebody, I saw somebody tweeted, you know, maybe somebody should check in on Roseanne Barr, right? All of the, the these people that refuse to allow people to be human, to make errors and to potentially correct them are creating the environment where people can, can exist inside of these mental prison, prisons. And one way to break out of these mental prisons is to commit suicide. The other way is just to be bold and to talk about things. And I've taken that route in life. I'm constantly releasing things that feel negative. I'm constantly talking about things. I'm evolving. Um, and I hope that if the people that are watching it, that they just feel inspired to talk about things, to know that even the people that you think are living these amazing lives are suffering too. Um, and that suffering is hard, but it's also something that relates every single person um, on this planet to one another. So thank you guys for watching The Periscope. First one we've done together, it was joint. Hope you learned something. If you didn't, that's all right too.